Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Camilla Carrara, Project Coordinator Class. I'm really pleased to welcome you all today to the session IP and Confidentiality in the Digital Era, how to present your project. Now, I'm extremely pleased to present our today's speaker, Giusy Bettoni, CEO and founder of CLASS, and the intellectual property lawyers, Anna Maria Stein and Caterina Nicolai. Enjoy your vision. So welcome to everybody. It's, uh, I'm really extremely pleased to be here because today I'm going to learn a lot, I'm sure. You, you know, this is a special, special session for us today. Uh, and thanks to, you know, uh, Anna Maria Stein and uh, to Caterina Nicolai to be here to dedicate your time and your ex expertise, first of all. And I'm here in representation of all the group that has been working, you know, uh, to get this uh, new award dedicated to sustainable visual. And that has been, uh, you know, we have uh, finished and we had a winner for the last, uh, you know, 2020. And now we are starting 2021. But we thought it was so important, you know, and thanks to Connecting Culture, that is our main, uh, you know, partner on this uh, journey. Um, we thought it was really important to, to talk about something that, um, you know, in this uh, digital era, era where we think that everything is available and everybody can use everything. Uh, I think we need to, to, you know, to take a step back and to understand a little, little bit better what the copyright means and how to use things and also how to use our own ideas, you know, when, when you want to interact with someone. So let's talk and I will give the complete uh, word first to Anna Maria Stein that deals with intellectual property, with experience in patents, trademarks, design, trade secrets, copyrights and unfair competition, as well as in advising on contractual matters with a focus on licensing and technology transfer contracts. So, really on the point. She has been involved in some of the most important projects of the European Commission for the support of SME in the field of intellectual property, innovation and sustainability, including work partnership project and elite project. She's a member of the International Association for Protection of Intellectual Property and the Licensing Executive Society. So really a huge reputation, a lot of work, young women, very passionate. So, Anna, up to you, what we should do, how we should look at, you know, not just protecting, but make the value of what we, you know, could do. Yeah. Up to you. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's uh, really interesting topics. Um, I will face uh, the issue from the uh, internal perspective. So, uh, what to do when you have a new idea, when you are developing a new project, uh, or uh, when you are somehow creating a, a new business. Um, the main issue is uh, um, keep it safe, uh, preventing others uh, from stealing your idea, and above all, uh, preserve your uh, IP rights. I will try to share some slides and uh, give you some tips, even if the matter is very important and uh, has to be faced in depth. But of course, uh, um, my point is be aware of it and uh, take care of this. Main point uh, is you have a project, you have an idea, and then you have to keep it safe. And how to prevent others from stealing your idea, your idea and preserve your intellectual property right. So there is a, a balance between uh, the issue of presenting your project to the public and we live in a digital world and our work is mostly on it's a social and media work so i cannot tell you uh don't you don't display in your website don't display your project in the social network everybody will be uh replying me you are crazy you are a crazy woman what are what are you do what are you saying so uh the main issue is uh avoid uh, the disclosure of confidential information 
and preserve any uh, possible intellectual property protection. Um, just to give you an idea, um, some intellectual property rights, some IP rights, uh, has to be registered uh, before the public disclosure. So the main issue I'm facing with um, teaching people or also during my work, my daily work as a lawyer, is the fact that, I'll make you an example, before filing a patent, uh, you cannot disclose the invention. So what may happen? People saying, okay, coming to me and saying, okay, I have a very good invention. I would like to file a patent. Okay, explain me the patent and explain me the invention, the process you have invented or whatever. And I said, okay, perfect. I have a wonderful video. And this video uh, was displayed on YouTube. You may understand that this is a, a terrible mistake because uh, before filing a patent, everything has to be secret. Otherwise, the invention is somehow disclosed and make available to the public before the, res the registration. The same may happen with design registration. It's something a little bit different because you have one year um, for filing a possible design uh, starting from the public disclosure. But um, on the other hand, you have also to uh, avoid uh, um, the stealing of your idea or what can happen, you display your project in your social network and somebody is coming and stealing the idea and, uh, 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 and copy your product. Uh, and, you know, the faster we go, uh, the first way will come with the final product. So, the main issue is how to present your project to the public through internet and social network and have some uh, tips. So, what I can give you now are some tips. So, main issue, use general information and do not disclose the part of a prototype, the drawings or the images, which contains trade secrets, so know-how, technical know-how, commercial know-how, confidential information, or at least don't disclose uh, such specific issue which can be patented or registered as a design. Um, when you are dealing with people uh, and this is mostly uh, B2B. So uh, when you are discussing, even if through social network with possible clients, possible investors, possible partners, uh, state clearly that everything is confidential and, uh, and that you are the owner. Um, in this way, you create uh, 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 good evidence that you were disclosing. Um, uh, okay, so um, always state clearly that you are the owner of the information, of the project, uh, and that there are some confidential issues. This is really, really important because you are making people uh, 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 understand that this is your project. Nobody will be saying, oh, yes, this was mine. And then when you are uh, getting into deep with a specific uh, 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 disclosing of information, use always a, a clear disclaimer stating that the information and the attachment are confidential. This is a um, further step. Maybe when you are in negotiation with possible clients uh, or possible uh, partners uh, or um, when you are presenting your project uh, to uh, specific uh, uh, companies. Um, another issue is, um, please go to the next slide, slide number four. Another issue is which is really important is how to disclose information. 
and keep them confidential. Um, the main, uh, 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 the main uh, way is to have a signature of non-disclosure agreement. This may be required when you are uh, discussing, especially with potential partner or client, and you have to disclose uh, um, confidential information or details of your project, and you um, don't know them from the very beginning, and please uh, make people sign a non-disclosure agreement. This is also a good way to understand if they are in good or bad faith. If they are really interested in your project and in developing a partnership or a commercial agreement, uh, they will have no problem in signing a non-disclosure agreement because it's usual. If people start hesitating and say, no, 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 I, I don't want to uh, uh, sign this kind of agreement, this is a good ring to make you understand uh, uh, how they are approaching uh, the negotiation. Um, this is a, 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 a short overview of uh, what is the content of this agreement. And then, of course, uh, if we have already filed a, a patent or a trademark, or there is a patent registration or a design registration pending, always indicate it. Always put it also in your social network. Um, this is a very good tool. So, um, practical steps to maintain confidentiality and uh, without avoiding any possible marketing issue uh, also through internet. Label all confidential information as confidential. You know, it looks very easy or at least very simple, but people are not doing. And this is very, very important. Put a disclaimer, all this information, all these drawings, all this picture belongs to uh, Anna Maria Stein and put a date. This is really important. It's really important. And then uh, if, you are, you, if you have sensitive information related to your project, restrict access. Restrict access. Don't disclose to everybody. Give access only to a certain uh, number of people. Only people who are really interested in collaborate with you or um, people who have already signed a, a non-disclosure agreement. And then Again, use non-disclosure agreement consistently. Don't be afraid of that. People who are in the business know them and are used to sign them. So people who refuse to sign them um, maybe are not really interested in developing a good cooperation with you. And regarding prototypes, or as well uh, project drawings, uh, sample, keep them physically secure. You don't know who can get in touch with this product or this prototype. And there can be people st stealing or making picture or copying. And also from the digital perspective, Keep everything digital secure. Don't leave everything open to uh, people working in your company, working in your office, uh, or working with you. Please, please select people who have access to the whole project, to the whole prototypes, or to the or very disturbed, Anna Maria, unfortunately. We are losing you. 
Can you hear me now? We cannot hear you. So while maybe you are organized yourself in order to answer, we will keep, uh, as Camilla was saying, the question at the end. So maybe, we... can you hear us, Anna Maria? I think we have. Yes. Oh. Okay, good, good. So thank you for the can moment. Can you hear me now? Now, now better, better. Okay, so I, I, I will simply close in a okay. couple of minutes my presentation. And uh, so, uh, Keep an inventor's log. Then you will probably share my slides so that everybody will have my the, 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 the bullet point of my presentation. Um, so keep a prototype secure, materially secure, and digitally secure, and keep an inventor's log, um, which is uh, record your progress in uh, creating your project and do it possibly um, with art copies. This is a wonderful way to give evidence that you are the inventor, that the idea is yours, uh, and to uh, give evidence uh, of that in case of somebody is copying you or is pulling your project. And then another issue which is very important, make it difficult. When you are displaying pictures, drawings, uh, in your the website, in uh, um, in social networks, um, don't if you have if you need to display something and to show pictures uh, or drawings, uh, if there are specific elements or part of a product or the invention that you are displaying, um, don't show them in a very good way. Um, make difficult for other people to understand exactly how it is and how it works. This is very, very, very important. I understand that the balance between marketing and, uh, and uh, disclosure uh, is difficult to achieve. That's why I always uh, suggest before starting a project um, to evaluate uh, uh, the possible protection uh, of intellectual property right and to have also a strategy on this point. So a business plan on one side and on the other, high, on the other side uh, an intellectual property strategy. So following this strategy you will be aware what you can disclose, what you decide to disclose, how to do, and how to do it in the best way. I think it's really good because uh, normally these kind of arguments are difficult, and I love the bullet point uh, approach where you can make a list. Some of them, as you said, looks like simple, but they are not because we are not so used, I think, to being so disciplined <laughs> sometimes when we, uh, you know, handle. Uh, our own ideas and uh, works. But, you know, we know that we have different questions that is waiting for you. Uh, in the meantime, let me introduce Katerina Nicolai. Welcome. Good afternoon. Ciao. So, lawyer since 2006, expert in the intellectual property with special focus on the audio video industry. So, really to the point here as well. She regularly assists producer, agency, and artists in the media industry in every aspect of their activities, from the conception of projects to the acquisition of rights, from procurement of financial resources, processing and exploitation of the work accomplished in all its form and modalities. She deals with issues related to the protection of image rights, as well as issues relating to defamation in the press and through cinematographic works and or television and other media. I think you're a very busy person. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Looking at <laughs> in, this, in that period, in this period. Yes. Yeah. The cooperation and consultancy provide to artists, gallery owners, and curators allow her to acquire skills in the field of visual art, photography, and the organization of cultural events. So, Katerina, what else to say? I think uh, there is a list, uh, you know, as we said before, also with Anna Maria, of a lot of things that are happening every day. You know, I, I just 
you know, got very caught by the defamation, for example. <laughs> you know. So please tell us how to yeah. move, how to do, please, we are in your words. First of all, I want to thank you, um, uh, class and Connecting Cultures, for inviting me. Because as you told uh, just a uh, few minutes ago, I work in uh, entertainment and particularly in the cinema industry, where we always have to do with, uh, with uh, um, copyright issues. Uh, so uh, I, I'm really glad to participate to this uh, uh, webinar. Because I do think that for whoever works in art, fashion, or uh, whatever field where you have to do with creativity, uh, you always need to be aware uh, that you can uh, run uh, the risk uh, to um, uh, infringe somebody else's copyright when you want to use uh, uh, third party uh, work within your um, your work. Uh, so um, to, to try to give you some suggestion and advice uh, in a very brief uh, <laughs> uh, in a very brief overview, I thought to split my presentation in two sections. In the first section, uh, I will uh, explain in a very uh, broad term what copyright um, is. Uh uh, who copyright belongs to, and uh, uh, what is the content of copyright, basically. And in the second part, I will uh, try to do like uh, Anna Maria and try to give you uh, some advice and some tips uh, to, um, to do your best to avoid uh, in copyright infringement. So, um, so uh, I was saying that I was uh, yes, saying that uh, the first things that uh, um, I will try to do is to explain what copyright is. So the first issue is, what is copyright? Uh, copyright is a law. It's a law that grants to authors and creators of a work the exclusive rights to use the work and to the right to prevent third party to use, edit, copy, exploit his work. Uh, Camilla, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second question that we uh, can uh, reply to is, uh, what is protected by copyright? Copyright only protects the original and creative works of authorship that is fixed in an any tangible medium. Copyright does not protect at all the ideas and concept of a work. What does it mean? It means that, for instance, if I want to realize a painting, only the painting that is completely realized is uh, protected by copyright, is not protect the idea of the painting, the scheme and the first draft of the painting. Okay. So uh, only when a work is realized is, is protected by copyright. Who owns copyright? Copyright owns to uh, the um, belongs to the uh, authors and a creator creator of the works. After the death of the authors, the ownership in a copyright passes to his heirs. In some case, the uh, author may also transfer or assign his copyright to a third party. In that case, the assignee will become a copyright holder. Let's take an example also in this case. For instance, if you are a writer, you can you usually uh, uh, transfer the, your copyright to a publisher. And the publisher can, in the sec once he uh, um, uh, acquired copyright, can- That is Jason. Sorry, can you can you mute your? Ah, okay, sorry, sorry. Someone is, is did a mute. Okay. Sorry, okay. No problem, no problem. And when the publisher has acquired the copyright, can exploit, sell uh, the uh, romance. 
At the same time, in cinema field, always the author of a story, the uh, screenplay and the director, the director of the film assign, transfer their copyrights to the production company. Then, uh, and then the production company can exploit the film in whatever means. Okay, so, but uh, what uh, does it mean to be a, a copyright owner? It means to, uh, that you will have two different kinds of rights, the exploitation rights and the moral rights. The exploitation rights are the exclusive right that belongs to the creators to reproduce or copy his work, to edit, elaborate, and make other derivative works based on the original, to distribute and exploit the works by giving, lending, selling, licensing the work, and whatever, perform and display the work publicly. Uh, on the other hand, the moral rights uh, are the right of attribution and the right of integrity. The right of attribution, it means that the author, only the authors can decide to publish and uh, distribute his work with his name or anonymously or with a pseudonym. The right of integrity means that the author also when the a work has been assigned to somebody else can object uh, to alteration distortion or mutilation of the work that is prejudicial to the author's honor of reputation uh, so the honor or reputation is the personality in, in the, the copyright field, we mean, it means the personality of the authors. So that means that, for instance, uh, if you are very religious uh, authors, uh, you can object to all the alteration of the work that are blasphemous, for instance. And in, okay. So an important difference between the exploitation rights and moral rights is that where else the, moral, the exploitation rights can be transferred, uh, in, you cannot in most countries, not in all countries, but in most countries, particularly in Italy, in Europe, uh, or, uh, and in Europe, you, in some countries of Europe, you cannot uh, transfer the uh, moral rights. All we belongs to the authors. Okay. And so, and now, uh, okay, uh, um, 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 uh, another question that we have to ask too is, can the copyright last forever? And also in this case, we have to do a, a distinction between exploitation rights and moral rights. Because in, the cop in most countries, the, uh, um, cop the, the ownership, uh, uh, of copyright uh, last for the life of the authors of the authors plus 70 years from his death. And once the copyright owner's term expires, the works enter into the public domain. That it means that that work may be used freely without the former copyright owner's permission. Whilst the moral rights can all, uh, last also when a work has entered into the public domain, or uh, we said it uh, last, um, before, when uh, the work, the exploitation rights, sorry, has been assigned to third party. Okay, so, okay, now uh, I want to. Um, uh, uh, keep your attention on other consideration that go uh, beyond the uh, uh, copyright because you have to uh, pay attention that when you want to use a work, a work where a subject is a person or a trademark, you also need to obtain the permission of the person and of the uh, owner of the trademarks that are depicted 
in that works, also if that works is in, uh, uh, has fall, uh, fallen in the public domain. Okay. So uh, now, uh, okay, um, I will start the second uh, part of the presentation when I try to give you some tips to uh, use somebody else's materials. The first uh, question that, uh, okay, uh, we have to ask ourselves is how can copyright work the use? The answer is very, very easy because to be sure to legally use third party material, you always uh, need to uh, obtain the copyright holder permissions. So let's go on with the other, okay. So uh, first, uh, when you are planning to organize your work first and, uh, and uh, um, in particular, when you want to use uh, a third party works, First of all, ask yourself, are the content images work protected by copyright? And you always assume, yes, they are protected by copyright. So when you uh, are planning your work, uh, the first things that you have to do is to research and identify the copyright owners of those materials. When you have identified the copyright owners, you need to obtain the authorization to use and exploit uh, that third party material within your work. In this case, I give you an important suggestion. The first is to try to obtain the permission in written form. At least you can have a proof with somebody else that you have uh, the authorization to use that material within your work. And always specify in the clearance that uh, you will obtain the duration uh, of the use, the territory where you want to use that work and the scope and the means of the use of the works. That is very important. Uh, third things that you have to take into consideration is that the authors can release the clearance uh, for free, but sometimes the clearance can also, uh, can also um, uh, um, ask uh, uh, to pay his uh, uh, authorization. And uh, uh, in the last, always remember to quote the name of author to respect his moral right of paternity. So when you are plan your uh, work, you have always to take into consideration the possibility that you cannot obtain the permission of uh, the, uh, the permission of the authors and probably that also if you obtain that permission, the fee to pay is too high for you. So you always have to, uh, um, you always need to have a plane B uh, and look for uh, alternative solutions. What can be these alternative solutions? The first solution that I suggest you is to use material that is in the public domain. But also in this case, you have to be careful always to um, uh, ask the authorization of a person, if for instance, the material that you want to use is a picture or images, or uh, if the, um, in the material is depicted a trademark, you, have, you need to ask the authorization of the uh, copyright owners. Uh, otherwise, you can also use, for instance, the for the material that you can find um, online, uh, usually I suggest that you use the uh, material that are licensed by the, the uh, so-called Creative Commons or similar license. Because in this kind of, uh, this kind of, um, of license allow you to use uh, those contacts in the same way their owner wants to share the work to the public. 
And in fact, if you read these creative content, uh, creative commons license, license that are very, very easy because you will find a, an icon that show you how, how can you uh, use, use that materials. And this uh, uh, way can be, for instance, that uh, and each icons, sorry, uh, will explain to you if you can use the uh, material for commercial or not commercial purposes, or for free, for free or for payment. If and in which way you have to quote the authors, and if you have the possibility to elaborate or not uh, the works. And uh, so um, that's it. <laughs> and uh, I, I think that, uh, I hope that everything is clear. And in any case, if you have any uh, questions, uh, we are here. Thank you very much, Katerina. I think we will need much more for sure. You know, we know <laughs> that, uh, you know, these 40 minutes is not going to solve, but at least uh, it introduces us to look at things in a different way. That I think uh, is today. Um, and we know that sometimes it's, it's a question really to be aware. It's a question anyway yeah. of respect as well, <laughs> you, know, yeah. about, you know, but at the same time, I think having uh, two faces of expert, uh, you know, that can answer some question and maybe to be in touch also later could be good. So at this point, Camilla, I would like to open the question, you know, that yeah. people has already put on the, on yes. the chat, starting from, uh, I think we can ask uh, both Anna and Katerina for the things in order to give maybe a more complete answer. Yes. What if the NDA contains uh, some clauses that are contrary to the law? Haha, <laughs> this is the main point. I mean, uh, everything I, I, I told you looks very easy and simple, but I did it in a simple way. Um, it's not so simple and not so easy. Uh, Non-disclosure agreement, it's very important agreement and has to be drafted carefully because otherwise the risk is to have a, 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 an agreement which is null and void or at least if some clauses are uh, uh, contrary to the law, these clauses may not be applied, of course, if, because they do not apply uh, automatically because they are contrary to the law. So uh, I think we will need a, a, another session or on how to draft an NDA. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will participate immediately, you know, because... <laughs> I, I don't know if it could be of interest, but from my point of view, it, it, it could be. Um, so uh, just a quick, uh, uh, quick answer. Uh, close, uh, clauses contrary to the law do not apply automatically. So this is very important. Uh, another point is state clear the object of a non-disclosure agreement, not say Anna Maria and Camilla are starting negotiation for a, a potential commercial cooperation and therefore they will exchange information. You are saying nothing. You don't know what you who is saying, uh, who is disclosing uh, information, what kind of information you are disclosing. So please uh, uh, make clear the object of a non-disclosure agreement. I am disclosing information related to my project, which is uh, a wonderful chair with ergonomic uh, uh, character and blah 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 please state clearly the object please state clearly who is disclosing to whom and of course the duration of a non-disclosure agreement uh, is a critical point it depends on the on the kind of information you are transferring or are disclosing so sometimes uh, it is in relation to the uh, uh, negotiation of a possible agreement or simply to get an investment. So state clearly that um, at least the non-disclosure agreement will last one year and then it can be renewed. But anyway, the disclosure information is covered for almost five years, which is uh, uh, um, 
the usual time, but uh, this timing has to be uh, aligned with the kind of information you are disclosing. So there could be a long project, a small project or uh, whatever. Don't know if Caterina, you want to add something or we'll go to the next oh, one. I think that Anna is uh, explaining everything uh, uh, beautifully. <laughs> okay. So we go to the next one. What recommendations do you have when interviewing and the potential employer will not sign an NDA? Yeah, so this is the main, uh, the, 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 the topic I was, I, I, I was telling during my presentation. Um, sometimes when you are dealing with confidential information, um, it is used, it is normal uh, to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So when people are refusing to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement, this has to make you think about, because it depends, of course, on the uh, uh, reasons they are given. If they are saying, okay, there are no confidential uh, information and therefore I don't want to sign any agreement, or I am disclosing to you the confidential information and therefore I don't want to, it's you that you, it's up to you to sign non-disclosure agreement uh, in my regard. Um, but in general, when a potential employee uh, is asking for confidential information and is refusing to sign a non-disclosure agreement, that's not a good sign. Uh, because there's nothing wrong in asking for uh, confidentiality. And it's, I would say it's uh, uh, non-disclosure agreement are uh, spread, spread all over the world uh, and are recognized among all most of the uh, uh, legislation. So, uh, I mean, it's not peculiar for Italy or for Germany or for US. It's something which is very common. So, um, this is the main issue. Uh, of course, if you are proposing, you have to propose a good agreement, not a, a terrible agreement or a, to binding. The agreement has to be a good one. Okay. So if you, Caterina do not want to add something, I can go to the next one. Yeah. Is it okay to repost a photo on social media crediting the source or should I also ask for an express previous approval? I think that I can reply. Uh, oh, oh yeah. sorry. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, social media is a complicated issue, but in any case, you we have to understand which kind of photos. So, if it's a photo of a, I don't know uh, an, an, a basic photo, uh, you uh, can the, and not artistic photo, uh, you can make it. But uh, um, um, I don't know exactly. So just I would like to ask the the, the uh, what does she mean? Only to repost. Mm, a photo that's written to repost and oh, yeah, crediting the the source but, and the out. Well, yeah. on social media you can repost uh, okay a photo with the credit. I don't think that there is any uh, problem. It depends on the content of your uh, social media, of course. Uh, uh, um, profile, for instance, if you're um, a Nazi or something like that, uh, that can be con and they uh, use that uh, uh, photo as a mean to uh, a kind of a propaganda of your uh, uh, ideal. It can, uh, you of course, you can run a risk that the owner of the photo of the copyright of the owner can object to you the use of that photo in your social media because you don't want uh, to identify his personality with uh, um, the um, ideal that you are uh, share but uh, if you only if you are a regular profile picture where you say well what a beautiful uh, <laughs> picture i've seen today and you put the name of the authors it's okay 
The important uh, is that you don't use that pictures or that uh, uh, artwork in any commercial ways. So if uh, if uh, in uh, use uh, the uh, your uh, social media to um, uh, promote your uh, work and your services, um, you cannot uh, um, use the uh, artwork of somebody else. I hope that everything is clear because the social media is always a bit complicated <laughs> issue that you have taken consideration many aspects. So, okay, Anna Maria, you want to add something or can we go to the next one? Okay, so uh, the next one is I would like to ask a class a question Is it possible to uh, retrieve webinars prior to this? I would like to review the other meetings. I leave the um, our YouTube channel and you can see all the previous uh, sessions we have done in the next, in the last months. Uh, then uh, a person was asking to see again the uh, second slide of the presentation of Anna Maria Stein. As we have five minutes, maybe we can reshare. Yeah. So it should be this one. Yeah, I, I assume it's this one, no? Anna Maria? Yes, this, is the, this should be the second one, and this is the third one. Well, I oh, don't know what... First, second, yeah. no? Yes, second okay. should be this one when we are dealing with the balance between uh, keep the project safe, uh, avoid uh, copying or stealing idea, preserve intellectual property rights, and on the other hand, the need to uh, market your project. And in a digital era, well, you can do it all through your website, social network, and in general through the web. I mean, uh, uh, if I tell you uh, don't do this, you, 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 you will reply you're a crazy woman. Um, so uh, the main issue is to get a balance between the marketing and uh, uh, the confidentiality. And above all, as I told you, um, do a business plan, a business project, whatever, but also do uh, an IP strategy and do it from both sides, from the side of your right and so what kind of right you have and how to protect them and on the other hand I was uh, saying uh, Katerina also on the evaluation and uh, of possible infringement of further rights because these two aspects um, are very important for your success. And if you lose on one side or on, on the other side, then it's, it's a problem for your project. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. And uh, there is another question. Why uh, to to mention this last question? <laughs> <laughs> what can designers do if their fashion design is clearly copied by fast fashion brands? <laughs> that, 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 that's the, 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 the main issue. You are disclosing everything and you have still an idea or a project ongoing and somebody is getting there is, is stealing and the, of course the big companies are more uh, uh, economic uh, 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 means and they can develop uh, quickly your project. That's why I'm, I was telling you, don't disclose the main issue. Um, make it difficult to copy or before disclosing, evaluate an IP protection. Maybe file a design registration. In Europe, uh, it's now becoming very easy. Uh, there are funding pro 
program for uh, young designer and you can find a design registration covering all, all, all Europe, of course, no longer UK, but there is a transition period. And in this way, you have a registration and you can claim the violation, the infringement of the, the design registration. That's why I'm talking about an IP strategy at the very beginning of your project. Yeah not when you are ongoing to prevent yeah being copied and to avoid to copy others yeah i think that i totally agree with amna maria also because uh, when the violation has uh, done uh, i have to say that on the other side if uh, there is not any registration it's very difficult sometimes uh, to obtain the proof that there was a violation if it's not uh, registered, because on the uh, copyright uh, uh, on the copyright side, it's most difficult to um, uh, to prove uh, the plagiarism. So uh, the very good idea is always to try to prevent that risk. And Anna Maria, as Anna Maria said, to register everything. <laughs> well, the I, sector. I think we learn a lot, but the two key things that for me are really crystal clear is that. It's not enough to learn how to be an expert in design, uh, in sustainability, in, in many of the things that a lot of people is representing here. But we need to understand how to, uh, you know, how to uh, prepare an NDA, first of all. <laughs> and second, it's not just the communication or the research strategy, we need an IP strategy. And, and that's maybe could be part of another conversation that we need to continue, I think, because uh, it's not possible, I think, to, to start and leave uh, something like that. <laughs> so thank you so much, Caterina. Thank you so much, Anna Maria. Thank you, so uh, thank you, you know, to all the team uh, of uh, class and, uh, you know, um, Connecting Culture to uh, organize it because we really need it. And I think uh, this will be just one step in that direction. Thanks. Have a good day and keep in touch because things will be moving quickly. Thank you so Thank much. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank Bye. you.